so it's a different day in a different location here. Finally got into my driveway and I think I fixed the power steering pump by accident here. I wasn't expecting it to be fixed. I thought I was gonna need a new uh, pump itself. But when I put that alternator belt back on, I just tightened all the belts that I could there and accidentally fixed the power steering. Runs smooth, just like the day it came from the factory. So problem solved. <laughs> it's pretty funny. This Just a little bit of maintenance goes a long way with this truck. I fixed the four wheel drive with just tightening that hub screw, fixed the power steering here, just tightening up the belt. I mean, who knows what else I'm gonna be able to fix with just maintenance. So that leaves me with the brakes here. Now, with this truck, the pedal just pretty much goes all the way to the floor. Of course, that's why I had it get it towed, <coughs> excuse me, home. And I don't know if it's either the master cylinder or the brake booster. Now I'm hearing air leak whenever I press on the pedal, but also, again, it goes all the way to the floor. So it's giving me symptoms of a brake booster and symptoms of a master cylinder. So I got it to start. I just wanted to show you the, the brake pedal here. It just slowly goes all the way to the floor. And I don't know if you can hear that in the audio, but you can hear that whooshing sound. So it might need a new brake booster as well. So I did some research and went to my auto parts store. This is about 60 bucks, this is about 70 bucks. So $150 to replace it all. But before I do that, I learned from other YouTube videos that there's a adjustment screw on the very tip of the brake booster here And I thought I'd try that first before I go spending some big bucks So I'm gonna take these two nuts off and just get this out of the way and then go from there So I'm not seeing any fluid back here you can see that Shaft play I think that's normal but my intent was to grab a hold of this brass looking collar here and then you get a, a seven millimeter and you just tighten this or excuse me loosen this out about a turn and that'll that shaft will get closer to the plunger of this master cylinder in theory making it easier to press the brakes so it's actually a three eighths i'm just gonna do this maybe one quarter turn at a time probably to a, about a full turn I don't want to do this too much and I wouldn't recommend you doing this yourself if you have a, a truck that has this the same symptoms as mine if you go too much your brakes can lock up you know it makes sense because they're constantly having pressure on the master cylinder all right let's try this again still goes all the way to the floor well I think it's a master cylinder all right so I apologize for the mess but I got my new master cylinder here and this was about oh I think almost just shy of 80 bucks okay so I put the master cylinder back on in order to get these brake lens off and I already loosened them up this bigger one is a 5 8 which this is the wrong size and the smaller one is a 7 16 I'm gonna use these plugs that came with the kit. So I have to stand here and watch it drip all day long. All right, so I left this sensor on for last because what I'm gonna try and do is turn it upside down. Hopefully it doesn't spill all over me. That works too, I guess. There we go. And since I'm here, I'm gonna return this back to the original position. About a full turn. All right guys, so here's where we're at. I had to do some more work to that master cylinder. Turns out you need this piece out of the original part to put in the new master cylinder. And then I'm guessing this O-ring goes right here. Got the new O-ring on. Now the directions say to fill this three quarters of the way. I'm gonna follow that because like everything on this channel, it's my first time doing this. About there. So now it just says to wait until fluid starts dripping out of those holes. And then I'm gonna plug them back up. Yeah, they're starting to right now. There we go. Perfect timing. There we go. All right. So next it says in the instructions I'm supposed to take a blunt object. 
that's blunt enough, right? Stick it in the back of the plunger and then press in no more than an inch. It's about the fourth time I've been doing this. You can see me shaking on camera. It's a lot of pressure and just slowly release. And then wait about 15 to 20 seconds. All right, so now it's installed. It's supposed to go, the instructions say to go inside the truck and check the pedal. It's supposed to be firm. Just goes down a little bit and then hits a wall, quote unquote. All right, so I'm bleeding the brakes now and I've done all three except for the last one here, the front left. Got a little water bottle with some brake fluid in there and just a clear line over that bleeder valve. And I'm gonna have someone press on the brakes while I open up that valve here. Go ahead, press and close it to, and then release and press. Okay. And release and press and release and press and release that's it brakes are bled all right let's see how it does yeah, it drives pretty good i'm kind of impressed oh crap until it died on me doesn't like it when I floor it. It's probably fuel related. Probably something with the throttle linkage or something, so it's gonna have to be worked out. But I mean, the brakes feel good enough to where I would feel okay with at least driving around the block here. Well, just taking that truck around the block told me a lot of things that I need to address on this vehicle. For starters, I noticed that the brake pads were low when I was bleeding the brakes, so that'll probably have to be addressed. But the brakes are fine for now. I'd, I'd feel confident enough to like say take it to my local car wash and get it cleaned up. So the master cylinder was a good replacement but probably the brake booster would need a replacement as well. Um, for now I'm just going to leave it. So when I would touch the throttle on this truck it would die on me and for my limited research that tells me I either need like a new lift pump or something in the fuel systems uh, clogged up, maybe a fuel filter, re return lines need to be replaced. Something's not right there. Also, the transmission lines were leaking when I got back in the driveway here. So that's why I have a piece of cardboard underneath the truck. It's leaking oil, uh, it's leaking transmission fluid. I also noticed that the radiator cap is leaking coolant as well. So probably that rubber gasket has just gotten old and brittle over time and needs a replacement. So it's just like a $5 fix, but it just needs to be gone through from front to back completely. So I wanted a project truck and that's exactly what I got here. I'm gonna be uh, taking out the interior next uh, next week's video vacuuming it up first and hopefully i can restore those seats because i haven't found a replacement anywhere at my local salvage yards it's a pretty rare seat to have two armrests on either side so i'm looking forward to it guys hope you guys are as well and i'll see you in the next one take care